It's a few minutes after midnight here in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to take you on a walk around some of the monuments and memorials. If you're new here, hello! My name is Rob. I'm a tour guide and the founder of Trip Hacks DC Tours. I'm going to head around to the other side of the camera, and then we'll get started. Okay. There's the Capitol Dome off in the distance, off to the east. This is one of my personal favorite spots in the entire city. Coming to the spot, looking around, you can see the Capitol Dome off to the east. Lincoln off to the west, you can see the Jefferson Memorial and the White House. It really is a pretty spectacular spot. But of course, this is a midnight tour of the monuments and the first stop on our tour is right here at the Washington Monument. Back in the old days, you could come to the Washington Monument with a timed ticket, wait outside for a park ranger to call you over, then they'd escort you inside and you could go up to the top. Nowadays, it's a similar process, but they added this uh, dark glass building right there. So when you visit the Washington Monument, you'll go in there, go through security, go through a metal detector, and then into the elevator and up to the top of the monument. So it's pretty late at night, after midnight, there's a lot of people out here. There are quite a few people hanging around here at the Washington Monument. And I am really curious to know whether you think this is a lot of people, um, about what you expected, more than you expected, less than you expected. Super curious to know. So leave a comment on the video and let me know. Now, of course, the Washington Monument itself, the tallest building in the city, 555 feet tall and the tallest building in the world when it opened in 1884. If you watched my recent fun facts video about the Washington Monument, you know that. It was the tallest building in the world only for about five years because five years after it opened, the Eiffel Tower debuted in Paris and the Eiffel Tower was not just a little taller than the Washington Monument, it was nearly twice as tall. So it is still the tallest building in Washington, D.C., but has not been a record-breaking, world record-breaking building in a long time. Check out my Washington Monument Fun Facts video if you are curious about that. Now, one of the worst myths in Washington, D.C. is this one that no building in the city can be taller than the Washington Monument. And that is just not true. If you have watched my Washington, D.C. myths video, you know that the reason we don't have tall buildings in D.C. is because we have a height limit. And the reason we have a height limit has absolutely nothing to do with the Washington Monument itself. It's because of the Height of Buildings Act of 1910, which basically limits the height of buildings in Washington, D.C. to roughly 13 or 14 stories. So not very tall. And as long as that law is on the books, the Washington Monument will be the tallest building by far. I think there's plenty of real estate developers who would love if the Washington Monument was the reason for the Height Act. Then they'd be able to build 50-story tall buildings. But alas, it is not. Now, uh, right ahead, what you can see straight ahead and a little bit to the right, that is the spotlight that is lighting up the Washington Monument. And in 2019 the Washington Monument got a big lighting upgrade. They replaced the old spotlights with these. These are new LED technology. Now the problem with the old fashioned spotlights was that it was hard to perfectly aim them at the monument. And so you wound up with bright spots and dark spots and it, it looked fine, but it didn't look great. So I'm gonna edit on a photo when I go back for editing uh, to show you the before and after so you can see exactly what the old spotlight looked like and what the, you know, compared to what the, the new LED lights look like. Now, I will say honestly, I never even really noticed these bright spots and dark spots until they installed the new LEDs. And then it was just like, whoa, can't believe we've been missing that on the, out on this for all these years. So now the monument is uniformly lit all the way from the bottom to the top and the pyramid at the top is also brighter and it's easier to see after dark and yes there is a blinking red light at the top of the washington monument my understanding is that 
all tall buildings have a blinking red light at the top, and it just so happens that in Washington, D.C., we only have one tall building, and so that's why there's a blinking red light at the top of the Washington Monument, but not on any other buildings. Now, as I make my way to the World War II Memorial, and eventually down to the other end of the National Mall to the Lincoln Memorial, let me explain why I'm out here and why I'm doing this. It's because if you've been researching a trip to DC, you've probably heard the advice, see the monuments at night. It's one of the very, in one of the very first videos on this YouTube channel, I even gave this advice. And eh, one of the more recent videos I made, I kind of walked it back a little bit because I realized that the situation is a little more nuanced than that very basic general advice kind of suggests. So in my newer video, what I said was, if you're going to see the monuments at night, focus on three, the Washington Monument, the World War II Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial. And those are the three that I'm going to be showing you in this video tonight. These are the three with the brightest lights, and I think they're the ones that people are mentally thinking of when they give this advice to see the monuments at night. That said, the reality is that these monuments are located on the National Mall. They're in the middle of this big park, and there's not a lot else nearby around. So it's not like going to Times Square in New York City where everything is fully illuminated or going to the Bellagio Fountain in Las Vegas and seeing that after dark where it's super bright and well lit. It's not like that. Uh, you know, this is a big park. And when you're going from one monument to the next, it can be pretty dark out here. So I tried to record this video and I'm going to edit this video in a way that really manipulates it as little as possible. What I want you to see when you watch this video is I want you to see basically as close as I can get it to what I see in my eyes right now. And so if you're squinting at your screen, if you're watching, especially if you're watching this on a phone or a device with a small screen and you're looking at it and you're squinting and you're saying, man, it's so dark, I can barely see anything. Well, <laughs> that's probably because I'm out here right now and that's what I see. It's quite dark out here. All right, so we have arrived at our second stop on the midnight tour. This is the World War II Memorial. This memorial opened in 2004, which if you know anything about World War II history was quite a while after the war ended. And there are several war memorials on the Tripax DC Monuments Tour. There's the Korean War Memorial, Vietnam War Memorial, and right here, the World War II Memorial. And unlike the, the other two, this one feels and looks very different because, you know, unlike the Korean War and unlike the Vietnam War, we were victorious. The Allies were victors. And so this one feels like a celebration. It feels happy because people were happy with the outcome of the war. There's lots of famous end of war photos, you know, the kissing in Times Square, famous photo. People were happy that the war was over and that the Allies had won. Now the centerpiece of this World War II Memorial is this big, beautiful, spectacular fountain. And this is a symbol of victory. This is called a victory fountain. And it's based on a, another historic end of the war photo. So it's based on actually a series of photos. So at the end of the war, a photographer in London captured a series of photos. The photographer saw these two sailors and two young women, and they were playing together in the fountain in Trafalgar Square, there in London. And because they were just happy, the war was over. It was finally over after all those years. And so they're just splashing each other and having a good time. Now, it's really dark, uh, so a bit hard to see, but I think you can kind of see there are quite a few people here. Right now, they are sitting on the edge of the water with their shoes and socks off, and they have their feet in the fountain. And yes, that is allowed. It is very specifically allowed. And it's actually based on that historic photo I was just describing, the one of the two young women and the two sailors. So, you know, the artists, they would probably have loved for people to recreate that famous moment a little more accurately. But, you know, for everyone's safety, um, we don't want people getting hurt or anything like that. So the compromise was that 
in honor of the historic day of the historic moment, you can take off your shoes and socks and sit on the edge with your feet in the water. And that is a way of celebrating victory. It is an amazing perspective to be inside this memorial. This is actually one of my favorite spots in the entire city for a view. I mean, look at the Lincoln Memorial off in the distance over there. From this spot, we are about, I don't know, five feet below grade. And so you get this amazing eye level view of the Lincoln Memorial off in the distance behind that waterfall. It's just, yeah, it's really nice. And now over here, this is where we you know, mark the price of freedom. The people who died, the Americans who died in the war, 400,000, over 400,000 Americans died in World War II. But I've got to stop and I've got to get this view because this is the view. This is that iconic monuments at night view that people talk about when they talk about seeing the monuments at night. Every one of the best views I'm going to try to stop at, I'm going to try to give you a sense of when people give that advice, see the monuments at night, they're often referring to very, very specific spots where you stand and you take in the view. And that was one of them, and there will be several more to go. This monument, the World War II Memorial, is very brightly lit, very well lit. Um, even though it's after midnight, it feels you know, very bright over here. And so when you get to the monuments themselves, they tend to be very bright. And that includes the Washington Monument, this one, and Lincoln Memorial. It's the walking in between the monuments where things can feel a little a little less bright um, a little bit more dark and we'll, we'll talk about more we'll talk more about that as I go from spot to spot but I end my monument or I end my monuments tour here at the World War II Memorial because one thing you learn in tour guiding you know school uh, or just learning it from being a tour guide is that you've got to start strong and you've got to end strong and no matter what time of year or time of day I give the tour I always try to end over here at the World War II Memorial because it, frankly, is just amazing and spectacular. And I'm talking about when I give this tour in the winter. Uh, I'm talking about when I give this tour in the morning, on the weekends. We start at 9 a.m. and, you know, I'm over here at noon. And even at noon, the brightest, sunniest time of the day, it's still where I want to end because it really is an amazing spot. And it's, again, of the three war memorials, the only one that really feels happy and celebratory. So. That's a pretty big deal. Now, come around to the side of the memorial, the uh, west side of the memorial, and you can actually go uh, right up next to the reflecting pool over here, which is what I'm about to do. I know it's probably nearly impossible to see uh, right now what I'm doing, but I am not about to walk into the reflecting pool. There is a several foot wide path that goes in between the World War II Memorial and the reflecting pool. and I like to come out here because this is one of the best views, one that not everybody knows to stop and come over here and see, but I mean, just look at this. So the reflecting pool is typically used to reflect the Washington Monument. So many photos you've seen of the reflecting pool from the other side reflecting the Washington Monument. But little did you know, you can come over here and stand over here and you can get a reflection of the Lincoln Memorial in the water too. And I've got to say, that's pretty cool and not one, not something that everybody knows to do. And of course, again, this, this right here, this is the iconic spot when people say, see the monuments at night, this is what they're talking about. So if that's what you wanna see, that's what you're gonna see. All right, so I'm gonna head off to the path over here and start making my way down to the Lincoln Memorial. Now, let me tell you about what it's like out here right now. I am recording this on Saturday night. Well, I guess technically now it is Sunday morning since it's after midnight. Sunday morning, early Sunday morning in July. As far as the weather, I checked my phone right before I started recording and it is 80 degrees right now with very, very light winds. So the combination of temperature that high, 80 degrees, and no breeze, oh, and it's very humid, right? Uh, so high temperature, no breeze, high humidity means it feels very hot. And that's the thing about summer in DC. Obviously, if you're out at noon when the sun is blasting UV rays down on you, I mean, that's tough. But people sometimes think, oh, well, I'll just wait till after dark and then I'll come out and it'll be nice and cool. And that is that does not guarantee that it's going to be cool. 
And tonight is the perfect example of that. And it's the humidity. I mean, it's, it's really the humidity. I am sweating right now. Uh, you can't see it, thankfully, but I am sweating quite a bit because the air just feels really heavy and really thick. Now, one question people ask about coming out here after dark is whether it's safe. And the short answer to this question is yes, it is. The likelihood of something bad happening out here on the National Mall is very, very low. Not zero, because nothing in life is zero risk, but I never thought twice about coming out here with my camera and recording this after midnight. You know, that was something that, you know, I had no qualms about. I never thought twice about doing that. That said, there's often a difference between actual risk and how risky things feel. And I will admit that I am much more comfortable walking through brightly lit areas of the city. And to get from monument to monument, it's kind of dark out here. It's pretty dark in the park. Uh, even paths like this one. I mean, there are street lamps. You can see street lamps. There's one right up ahead uh, that these people are about to walk under. And then there's several more all the way down. But in between the street lamps, I mean, this path is kind of dark. And then, you know, if you leave the path, if you go onto the grass, it's really dark. All right, now I wanna turn the camera quickly and show you the District of Columbia World War Memorial. Some people call this the DC War Memorial. This is a monument, a local war memorial. It honors the residents of Washington, DC who served in World War I and the 499 of them who unfortunately never made it back. Now, this is a uh, part of the Trip Hacks DC Monuments Tour, private tour. Uh, now, I haven't been coming here in 2022 because of some construction in the area, but I will be resuming, adding this, I will be adding this back onto the tour shortly. And most people who come see this on tour, we see it during the daytime. And the thing is, unlike the Lincoln Memorial, unlike the Washington Monument, that is not lit by giant spotlights from the outside. That is unique in the sense that the lights are all on the inside. So unlike the big monuments that are lit by huge spotlights, that one, it really feels more like it's glowing off in the distance rather than being lit up really bright. So I think that's pretty cool and uh, definitely unique, definitely unique. Now let's uh, briefly talk about getting around. Say you're watching this video, I've inspired you, you just saw some of those you know, iconic views I showed you and you say, all right, this is something I'm going to do. I want to do this. The next time I come to Washington, D.C., I'm going to go out after midnight. I'm going to see these monuments at dark. Oh, and one thing I will say is that it's very, when it gets dark depends on the time of year. And this may seem obvious, right? But in the winter, when I give my tour in the winter, um, it's getting dark at like 4.45 in the afternoon. And it's pretty much completely dark by, you know, just a little after five. So if you come in the winter, you do not have to wait until really late. You don't have to stay up till midnight to come see these monuments, quote unquote, in the dark. And of course, December, you know, the shortest day of the year is uh, the December equinox, right on December 20th. So if you're here at that time of year, you don't have to wait super long. Now I'm recording this in July and in June and July, those we have the longest days of the year. So you do have to, uh, you know, stay up a little bit later. And so you don't have to necessarily stay up all the way till midnight. And in fact, if I was going to see the monuments with the lights on, I probably wouldn't even wait till pitch darkness. I'd probably prefer to do it like right when it's starting to get dark. So if, you know, it's starting to get dark around nine o'clock, I'd probably come and do it then. I don't think you have to wait all the way till the middle of the night to do it. Anyway, let's talk about getting around. I'm obviously doing this on foot tonight. I think the best way of getting around Washington, D.C. is walking. I think the best way of getting around is on foot. I have made that opinion known in many of my videos, in some podcast episodes. And I actually, I'm going to cut across here. Um, that path is getting a little boring to look at. And I want to I actually start seeing the Lincoln Memorial in all of its glory. So I'm going to start cutting across to the path next to the reflecting pool, make my way over there. Now you've probably noticed already quite a few people getting around on e-scooters. E-scooters are very popular among the tourist crowd. 
I personally do not particularly like them, nor do I use them, but I will say that they are a fun novelty, and even though I personally don't use them, doesn't mean they're bad for everybody. The thing is that scooters, compared to walking or biking, it, they're expensive. I mean, they're expensive. Uh, so each company has slightly different rates, and that's a little annoying. But on an e-scooter, for a 30-minute ride, it will probably cost you a little over $10. And if you have a family, so say you're a family of four or a group of four friends or something like that, I mean, a 30-minute ride for four people times 10, I mean, that's $40. That's a decent chunk of change. So, you know, if you have multiple people in your group, it starts to add up. The other thing about scooters is that there are very specific rules for riding them around here, riding them around the National Mall. So when scooters first came to DC, the National Park Service just outright resisted. They said no scooters allowed in the park, and that didn't stop anybody from riding them in the park. But it eventually led to a situation where you can ride them in the park, that is now allowed, but you cannot end a ride just in the middle of wherever. You have to end your ride at designated scooter parking spaces. And the way where you know where those are is you have to use the app you know, of the scooter company that you're using, whether that's Bird or Lime or Lyft or any of the other companies. And you have to be very aware of where you are allowed to end your ride so that you, know, you can do it correctly, do it by the book. So, Scooters, they're expensive, but they're a fun novelty. And you know, when you're on vacation, eh, you're a little less price conscious. So even if it is $10 for a 30 minute ride, if you're on vacation, maybe you think, eh, who cares? All right, here we are, another iconic view from the reflecting pool. So we already saw the reflecting pool from the other side. Here it is from the famous side. And there is very little breeze tonight. So this is about as good of a reflection of the Washington Monument in this water that you will ever get. And I say that because most of the times when I give the tour, it's a little breezy or a little windy and we don't get that perfect reflection. Tonight, you know, I'm sweating out here. I'm, you know, getting really sweaty in the heat and humidity because there's no breeze, but hey, at least you got a nice reflection. Now we will begin our ascent to the top of the stairs to see the Lincoln Memorial. The year I am recording this, 2022, the Lincoln Memorial is 100 years old. It was dedicated in 1922, May 1922. It is just an incredible place. It is the most visited, most popular site in all of Washington, DC. It is my personal favorite monument. And again, when people give the advice, see the monuments at night, this, I really believe, this is what they are referring to. I mean, this really is quite spectacular. So we're gonna make our way up the stairs and I know it's dark and uh, not, not really sure how much well you can see, but I am really curious if you can see, there are, you know, to my eye, <laughs> there's quite a few people here. It's, it's not the most packed I've ever seen it, but there are quite a few people here and it's basically midnight 30 now. So, or, you know, almost midnight 30. So it's not like it's the middle of the night, like three in the morning or anything, but I'm, I'm, Curious, you know, do you think this is a lot of people? Do you think this is more than you expected, less than you expected? Just just let me know in the comments because I am extremely curious. But sometimes people, you know, ask me like, oh, when can I come to the Lincoln Memorial and have the place to myself? When, when can I go there and there won't be all these other tourists around? And my short answer is basically never. Uh, I, I have never been to the Lincoln Memorial with no one else around. Now, the times I've been here with the fewest number of people around tend to be, you know, in the winter, in the off season when there's just the fewest number of tourists in DC. And also, you know, like right after a big storm or something when everybody's kind of taken cover and they're not out exploring anymore. But here we are. You know, the first time you walk into this chamber, it is, it's, it's really just amazing. And something that people have told me, they always remember. Uh, everybody seems to always remember the first time they ever climbed those stairs and walked in here and saw that statue of Lincoln. It, it really is uh, an incredible memory. Now, not something I do all the time, and I actually don't really ever do this when I am leading a tour, but it can be pretty cool, is you can go around to the back of the Lincoln Memorial, and it's a you know, pretty cool view. Also, at night, when the lights are turned on, it's pretty spectacular uh, to see 
these columns lit up to look up at the ceiling. Uh, this is actually a really popular spot among photographers. Now, I am not a professional photographer. Many, many photographers, much more talented than me, will tell you that you, know, you can frame your shot. So if you're taking a photo of a person, a subject, you frame them up in between the columns on the left and the building on the right, and it's just an amazing framing and something that if you ever get a chance to try it, you know, try it. Uh, but again, I mean, look at this, just absolutely stunning. The Lincoln Memorial based on the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. You come here, you know, after midnight and it's stunning. I, I can't deny that. Uh, I really can't. This is definitely one of the spots people think of when they think of monuments at night. Now across the bridge here, that is Arlington Cemetery. It's way too dark to see right now. If you come during the day, you can see Arlington Cemetery off in the distance. You can see Arlington House up at the top of the hill. And if you are going to Arlington Cemetery, yes, you can take the blue line, you can take the metro, but if you're already all the way over here at the Lincoln Memorial and your next stop is Arlington Cemetery, you can just walk right across that bridge, right across Memorial Bridge, and you'll be right over there. And of course, I wanna wrap up with this view because, I mean, just look at it, just look at it. This, this is iconic, this is the view. This is the view people talk about, that they dream about that they want to get when they come, quote, see the monuments at night. And it's just amazing. I had actually a proposal on a TripX DC private tour earlier this year. So congrats to Allie and Kyle. And thanks for watching this midnight virtual tour around the monuments. If you want to watch another TripX DC video, like my ultimate Washington DC travel guide, you can click or tap on the left side of your screen right over there. As I say at the end of all of these videos, Enjoy your trip. <laughs>